Hi there, a very warm welcome back to day three of Write 10 Short Stories in 30 Days with me, Maria Franklin. It's great to have you here. I hope you're really enjoying the course so far and well done. The hardest part is over. You've switched the video on. You've no doubt got your pen and notebook at the ready and you're raring to go. Uh, hopefully you've created an opening that you're really proud of for your supernatural story and we'll return to that in just a few minutes minutes. Before we go there I just want to talk about a term that you may or may not have heard before called the death of the author. And don't worry I don't mean that literally nobody's going to die here. It just means that what you're aiming for here when you're writing your short stories as well as enjoying the process enormously of course and um, if you're writing for your for a reader in mind if, if publication at the end of this is an objective or a or a possible objective for you is something you need to keep in mind. It basically means that a reader is so immersed in your story and what's going on in it, uh, they, they become unaware that they're actually reading a, a piece of fiction which a writer has created. It's almost as though they're literally living in the story, within the settings and uh, amongst the characters that, that you've created. So it's really exciting stuff. It's basically where their level of engagement is, is so intense, they lose track of their own existence and just keep reading the words that you've written for them. So it's really exciting stuff. So you want to be engrossing your reader to the point where they're reading your story when they should be doing something else or missing their bus stop and certainly recommending your stories to their friends. Um, so I'm going to help you throughout this 30 day challenge to create stories that readers are sad to finish um, ones where they get to the end of the story and they, they miss the characters afterwards so here's some tips how to do that so firstly hooking them straight into your story so creating a compelling opening which you've already done um, creating a setting which they can imagine so making it atmospheric and drip feeding that sensory information throughout your story uh, and we'll return to that um, going easy on the speech tags as well so I'd say if you're going to use lots of speech tags in your stories then try to use simple ones like said and replied maybe stay away from exclaimed and shouted and yelled and extrapolated and other flowery speech tags which do tend to jar a reader from the story um, I tend to um, I do use speech tags but I also use character action to denote which character is speaking as I'm writing um, so as an example I just can't take it in Richard accepted the tissue and sank onto a chair instead of I just can't take it in sobbed Richard so the reader would know which character is speaking but I'd have them doing an action rather than using a speech tag uh, I just think it's more engaging for your reader uh, try not to use too many adverbs in your story use stronger verbs instead some of this is editing stage stuff but I'm just running through it now because there's so much to cover in these 30 days um, so instead of Mark walked quietly to the door, so obviously an adverb is anything that ends in L-Y, I'd have Mark crept to the door. Stronger verb, much more powerful. Um, use adjectives sparingly, never place two together. Um, so use your, strong, your strongest um, adjective. Um, I tend to try and avoid using them as much as possible. So instead of talking about a tall man, I would possibly describe him, him stooping under a door to show his tall rather than telling. So show, don't tell is something else we'll keep talking about as well. And allowing reading to be an active process, um, again this is more editing stage stuff, so not telling the reader absolutely everything but allowing them to make some inferences and fill in some of the gaps. So if you were writing for example about a, a hospital appointment, um, the reader wouldn't necessarily need to know about the journey and the, what's happening in the waiting room and that kind of thing and the conversation with the receptionist. They just want the bits that keep the story moving forward, the interesting juicy bits. Um, I think the really exciting thing for us as writers is there's almost an unsigned contract between us and our readers. So we 
we promise to give our readers an entertaining and immersive experience and they in return promise to keep reading until the story is complete. Um, so some, we need to write something that can really lose themselves in. Right, okay, so um, let's now return to your supernatural story. So hopefully you've got the opening written and you've got the rest of it loosely mapped out in a series of uh, bullet points. But don't worry if these bullet points are pretty vague at this stage, that's totally fine. Hopefully you've got around five or six of them, um, which will become the scenes that make up your story. So start by rereading your opening paragraph just to sort of recenter yourself in your work. So then take your first bullet point uh, and that's going to become your next scene after your opening. So you're going to do a rough outline sketch first to take in that scene from beginning to end. So um, you can bullet point that out and uh, in the order with uh, of which your scene's going to unfold and what's actually going to happen within it. Um, so you could um, write what's going to happen at the beginning of that scene, then what comes next, then what comes after that, then what comes after that, and then how's that scene going to end. So you're almost taking that bullet point and then breaking it down into, into five more sort of sub bullet points, if you will. So you've then got a skeleton um, of, the, of your scene. So now you're going to write your scene, just putting some flesh on the bones of your scene skeleton. I can talk about bones and skeletons here since that were uh, writing a supernatural story. And then do the same with all your other bullet points that you've uh, written out that of your story's progression from yesterday. So they're all individual scenes. Uh, so flesh each scene out first and then, then write them out in full. Um, I do advocate the writing process of your first draft being done in longhand. I think it's just more creative and more portable. Um, you will find your own way of working, of course, but personally as a writer, if I'm working straight onto the computer, I'm trying to edit whilst I'm actually drafting because um, that the, the appearance of the printed word on the screen, it, it has a sort of air of finality about it, so it needs to be perfect. Whereas if I'm scribbling away into a notepad, I kind of give myself a bit more free reign. So I'd be interested to know what you think about that, so drop, drop into the comments below. Um, and then I do the typing as a second draft process, but I'm going to talk much more about editing and drafting second drafts later. Uh, so try not to edit, I'll keep going on about that as we go on. Um, you can, we'll do editing later, we'll talk a bit more about editing tomorrow. Uh, this is just you at the moment telling the story to yourself, this, this first draft stage. So don't worry about perfection, my work usually goes through about eight drafts before it's anywhere near finished. Uh, don't write your ending yet of your story. Um, I know that's jumping ahead a bit here, so get as far as you possibly can in the main story. So a short story might consist of maybe five or six scenes, including your opening and your, your ending. Uh, and each of those scenes will be mapped out into a, a beginning, a then, a then, a then, and then an end. So you, your story's really got that progression going through it. I, I do like to use this structured approach in, in writing. Uh, remember as well that reading is one of the most important things you can do for yourself as a writer and as I said in day one often what you enjoy reading is what you enjoy writing as well so as we progress through this 30 day challenge I do advise you to try and uh, read a short story uh, in the genre that were writing and I told you it was intense didn't have this 30 days and uh, so for this supernatural genre, genre uh, I recommend Click Clack the Rattle Bag by Neil Gaiman who you've probably heard of and that's available freely online to read to or, or to listen to as well so I love listening to stories because you can do other stuff multitask whilst you're uh, doing it. Uh, so enjoy this is probably the the hardest of the uh, 
uh, of the three days we're spending on Supernatural, it's probably the one where you've got the most work to do. Uh, so if you can get it all done in the day, then that's absolutely brilliant. And then you're ready to uh, join me when I post the video up at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning to do to look at the ending and the editing of your Supernatural story before we move on to the next genre. Um, but do take the course at your own pace. I don't want to overwhelm you or overload you. So you, you as I've said before, the, these videos are up here forever. So, you know, use them as at your own pace. And I'll see you tomorrow for the editing and the, the ending and the editing of your Supernatural story. Bye for now.